welcome to jasonnewland.com that's my website and this is let me bore you to sleep so basically <laughs> I've nearly already bored myself. So, I'm just going to talk. Remember to only watch or listen to this thingy recording. And you can safely close your eyes. It's very important because this recording, which is aimed at helping you to get some sleep may cause drowsiness I love saying that it's one of my favourite things <sighs> <clears throat> oh, that's nice, and they're clearing my throat. How romantic. So, I'm laying on my bed, flat on my bed, because I don't know, I think I mentioned it yesterday that. I feel a little bit worried about my neck because sitting up in the bed I think it was putting my neck in a, an, a, an awkward position and it was painful for quite a few days more so than the uh, it's been for quite, you know, for a long time, so I need to look after our necks. It's so important. So I'm kind of giving my neck a little bit of a rest as far as not forcing it to lean forward like I was. Plus, I think the the time that I spend on the laptop, okay, looking forward and leaning forward, it's not going to be I guess it's not going to be delightful for my neck. I like that word. Delightful. I think the only, the only people, the only I've ever heard use the word, use that word regularly, is Irish people. And I realise my regular connection to Irish people is watching Mrs. Brown's boys on TV but everyone's so delighted I'm delighted for you I'm delighted I'm delighted I don't remember people saying that when I was in Ireland I lived there for a while I hear it on 
TV shows and other places. Uh, maybe it's just maybe it's a new thing. Maybe you know it's the equivalent to like. Because in England, if you listen to some of the younger population, especially I'll be on the bus and there'll be, I don't know, college age people, and I think they've replaced a breath with like, the word like. I'm not going to do an impression, but it's just. I think what it might be is because of. I mean, it started a long time before the internet. I mean, but it's become more and more. Well, not a long time, but it's 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 become kind of ingrained. And I think maybe it's because of sound bites and uh, the way that the internet, especially like YouTube videos and uh, TV shows aimed at the young, young generation, it says no gaps, there's everything's very fast and the opposite to me, I guess. So I don't know if there's many young people watching this or listening to this. I hope, hope that I'm able to bore everybody equally. And I'm not really not picking on young people because they're the future and, you know, if I live to get old, I'm going to need people that are young now. I'm going to need them to wipe me bum, you know, and wash me and feed me and stuff. So, you know, I want to keep on the right side side of them. So I think that it might be because there's that pressure to be fast quick, keep going, no breaks, no pauses, and I don't necessarily think that that's useful. It's a bit like if you watch a uh, TV show that could be a soap opera let's say EastEnders I don't know if you um, watch EastEnders in your country I'm not sure if it's available or Cor yeah, Coronation Street's another one Well, for those that watch EastEnders, I'll let you know that the East End of London is nothing at all like that television show. Sorry to break it to you. Mind you, in Stratford, down Forest. Forest Lane, I think it is, or... Anyway, if you go to
There's a road. I think it's Forest Lane. Forest Lane. And it leads... It's basically the road that leads to Forest Gate. There is a pub called the Queen Vic or the Queen Victoria. There is, uh, I might be making this next bit up, but I'm pretty sure it's true. There's a it's this area which is around there called the Albert Square. And here's a bit of trivia for you. A bit of, a bit of a I wonder what the meaning the meaning of the word trivia is. If you look in a dictionary, trivia, look it up. Why do you, does anyone look at dictionaries anymore? <laughs> Just Google it, Google it, Google it. So I was uh, completely forgotten what I was talking about. Oh yeah, Mem memory. I was watching this. Uh, I know I wasn't talking about memory. I was trying to be humorous with my lack of remembering. Yeah, this trivia. Pauline Fowler's. living room when EastEnders started so one of the designers I think the person who designed that living room actually designed it on their own living room and they lived in a little house in Manor Road, Colchester, Essex. How's that for trivia? There are there are background sounds occasionally going to just breeze over you at times. I think that's the, the difference between the word sounds and the word noise because sound in my mind sound doesn't have any emotion connected to it at all no emotions noise even just saying the word noise I can't even say it without degree of emotion connected to it there's there's stuff connected to that that word noise it's an emotional word sound is a neutral word 
it really just feels factual there's no romance attached no anger it's just a sound it's just a word rather so you can see the power of changing making a small change where you instead of saying the word noise you transfer it and replace it with sound the word sound and that transforms the sentence that you are saying it transforms how you feel I like things like that I like I do like, I do like practical stuff, not in a sense of um, digging gardens and gardening and climbing trees and plants, basically anything to do with gardening, I'm not really into that um, but I suppose when I think of practical things I like the idea of being able to make changes in a very kind of simple manner and videos online about what's mainly stuff connected to the brain which I found really really fascinating yesterday I watched a video which was focusing on yeah it's focusing on pain so it was a BBC documentary lasted just under an hour about 53 minutes or 57 minutes I'm not sure what of them and it talked about people and show them, interview them, people that some that didn't actually have never ever felt physical pain. And these experts really couldn't figure it out. And it turned out that they were mutants, real life mutants. One of their, I don't mean they could fly or turn green or 
anything like that. One of their um, cells has mutated. So, there really are mutants already walking the earth. How fascinating. Whether there are any ones that can fire ice out of their fingertips. I don't know. I'm guessing not. exciting that they're able to discover this which means that the experts can actually well they can map the brain now There's this thing, I don't really know what they were doing. Uh, you know, the, I don't know the technology behind it. But there was this lady that had had a stroke. She was young. And her, she pretty much made a full recovery. Other than she had pain on one side of her body. And the specialists couldn't really figure out why she had that pain. Because she'd healed and she, you know, there was no reason for that. Well, it turned out they did a brain scan, not didn't stick her into a one of those big tubey things, you know, the buzz. I don't know if they buzz. Maybe it's something else I'm thinking about, but you know, it's not one of those things. They actually put her uh, you know, just some bits on her head to scan her scan her, her brain while she was there and He triggered, he, he set a pulse into her brain, he could actually, the specialist, could trigger the part of her brain which would make her feel her hand based on a normal um, connections that most people have. Well, she was feeling it in her arm, not her hand. So he surmised from this that, this is the doctor, that she, her brain had rewired itself, you know, to heal and to recover so that she could walk and talk and have normal movement but in the process it got a bit jumbled some of the connections were not connected properly which was causing pain So another person that was with this doctor had this little thing. It looked like a bit like the old fashioned barcode beep machines. 
they used to get in supermarkets. And he put it on her head and there was lots of clicking sounds and he was doing it just over the area responsible for that part for the hand and for the arm or whatever for that area did it a few times and eventually she could feel her hand when it was triggered in her brain Not only that, she didn't have any more pain in her arm. And she started crying with whatever emotion she was experiencing maybe she was just happy to be on television but probably not I found that very fascinating the idea that they also they had this this man and he was in hospital severely you know large portion of his body had been burnt and he was having to have treatment every day which is was causing him uh, I think discomfort is not anywhere near the degree uh, the proper right word to explain how he was feeling so what this hospital came up with or this specialist unit came up with was this virtual reality headset which he could play this patient could play a game called Snowman or something about snowmen. And it's just throwing snowballs and it's uh or he liked it anyway, he enjoyed playing it. And he had the treatment on his leg or his legs. And he said that it just really didn't bother him the way I had before having the treatment. And it was the theory behind this whole thing was his focus was taken up so much on the game that he was playing that he didn't have enough focus for the pain I find that fascinating I don't know why because I know that focus of attention is the is the pillar one of the main pillars of hypnosis is focusing on me focusing on my voice on my words it's 
so that all those things that perhaps previously to listening to me those things can just be left the mind focuses on just one thing. Letting go of various unimportant thoughts. just find that fascinating that things can be that simple and I suppose that is why I am making these sessions Because there's a few reasons, I suppose. I like to feel useful. I like to feel that I'm helping. I like to feel that I'm contributing towards society. And maybe not so much in my local area, but worldwide. I think the, the idea is when you focus just on my voice, the only way you're able to do that is by letting stuff go. Give yourself a rest. You allow yourself time. And space. To be. yourself space to let go of stuff and if this is the first time that you have listened or watched me you can't really watch me because this is a an audio recording which is then turned into a video for YouTube. But there are videos of me where I move around and, you know, really, they call them talking pictures, they used to. I suppose now it's just video, but One of the main reasons for doing these is to gradually reduce 
the amount of things that you're focusing on. You are listening to my voice. The more you focus on me, the less things you're able to focus on. that stuff can just vanish in its own time and you can notice those things that you say to yourself maybe on a daily basis you can decide what's good for you you and just let go of bits that are no longer useful you can enjoy the journey of becoming less cluttered Rhea to use more of your brain focused on more of those things that you can enjoy do believe that this brings me to the end of this let me bore you to sleep it is available on iTunes and SoundCloud and Spreaker various others it will be all available on YouTube as well I hope you have a lovely sleep when you need to let go safely now I shall depart